Heavenly Father, who chose the Virgin Mary, full of grace, to be the mother of our Lord and Savior, now fill us with your grace, that we in all things may embrace your will, and with her rejoice in your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you. Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, we are drawing close to the moment. We are drawing close to the day. We are drawing close to Christmas. In this most unusual of years, we are coming close to something traditional and familiar. In this year of everything new and strange, we are coming to something familiar and beloved. Sometimes I think one of the biggest challenges we have in communicating the gospel of Christmas is how familiar it is. We all know the story so well. We all know the, the baby and the manger and the angels and the shepherds, and Mary and Joseph, and it's all so cozy. And there's nothing wrong with cozy. Cozy is wonderful. Uh, the Norwegians have a word for it, which escapes my mind at the moment, a word for that coziness that you seek when the weather's cold outside, that snuggling at the fire kind of feeling. And there is that sentimental coziness about Christmas. But we miss, perhaps, when we come too close to the coziness, we miss, perhaps, the strangeness, the weirdness of what happens in this moment. And I mean weird here, not in, you know, like the way kids say, oh, that's weird. I mean, weirdness as in different from what we would expect, strange and peculiar, and in fact actually turning to its Germanic origin, weird, your destiny, something that is woven in to the fabric of the universe for you, and is only weird in the modern sense because we have the assumption that we control our destiny, that we are the manufacturers of our own fate. Rather than our fate having become weird to us, we have become weird to it in the modern sense. So it is weird in the modern sense for us to come up against that which is weird in the archaic sense, that is our destiny, our fate which is woven into our lives by the one who made us. One of the things that can help us to rekindle that sense of wonder, to be in touch with that sense of the numinous, is poetry, poetry that 
opens up the pores, as it were, that helps us soak in the wildness and weirdness of the world. The poet and priest Malcolm Gate talks about the lights at Christmas and how we turn everything on near the beginning of December, end of November, really, and that all of those artificial lights, all the Christmas lights, the stores all brightly lit, etc., which are so bedazzling and wonderful, do the same thing spiritually that street lights and storefronts and illuminated neon signs and whatnot do for the stars. They blot it out. You know how you can't see, when you're in the city, you can't actually see the sky. You can't see the stars. There's an artificial ceiling put on the world by the, the street lights and whatnot. And when you go out into the country where the lights are far away, now you can see the lights of heaven. So with all of the bright shining lights of Christmas, I mean the secular shopping kind of Christmas, all of those lights distract us from the light that is coming. And Gates' point is that maybe in Advent what we ought to be doing is turning the lights off, saving them for Christmas when we could really appreciate them, and in the meantime enjoying the darkness and enjoying the coming of light that is Christ. At any rate, it is also uh, Father Gate who led me to this poem, which I'm going to share with you now. It's by John Donne. Salvation to all that will is nigh. That all, which always is all everywhere, which cannot sin, and yet all sins must bear, which cannot die, yet cannot choose but die. Lo, faithful virgin, yields himself to lie in prison in thy womb. And though he there can take no sin, nor thou give, yet he will wear, taken from thence, flesh, which death's force may try. Ere by the spheres time was created, thou wast in his mind, who is thy son and brother, whom thou conceivest, conceived. Yea, Thou art now thy maker's maker, and thy father's mother. Thou hast light in dark, and shuttest in little room, immensity cloistered in thy dear womb. Immensity cloistered in thy dear womb. The eternal, the infinite, the immortal, the unknowable, the unreachable, the unplumbable depths of God contained in the body of a young woman. She who was created becomes co-creator of God. She who was made by God gives her body to make God. It is an astonishing miracle that happens at Christmas, a weirdness that is deep woven into our being, that life from life proceeds, and all life comes from God. The child is yet in the womb, yet unfolding in secret darkness. Turn off the lights for a little while. Enjoy the darkness. Enjoy the unknown. Enjoy the mystery and the weirdness before the lights leap back on at Christmas time. Come to know the weird in your life, that which God has meant for you. Reacquaint yourself, let it be weird no more. Come to know the one who has come for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
O key of David, and scepter of the house of Israel, you open, and none can shut, you shut, and none can open. Come, and lead the captives from prison, those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.